Mary's purification. I saw the Holy Family with old people outside Jerusalem. The Blessed Virgin was almost all the time alone in her room, with the child which lay upon a low, covered projection of the wall. She was always in prayer, and appeared to be preparing herself for the sacrifice. I received at that moment an interior instruction as how we should prepare for the holy sacrifice of the Mass. I saw in her room myriads of angels adoring the child Jesus. Mary was fully absorbed in her own interior. The old people did out of pure love all they could for the Mother of God. They must have had some presentiment of the child's holiness. I had a vision also of the priest Simeon. He was a very aged, emaciated man with a short beard. He had a wife and three grown sons, the youngest of whom was already twenty. Simeon dwelt in the temple. I saw him going through a narrow, dark passage in the wall of the temple to a little cell which was built in the thick walls. It had only one opening from which he could look down into the temple. Here I saw the old man kneeling and praying in ecstasy. The apparition of an angel appeared before him, telling him to notice particularly the first child that would, early the next morning, be brought for presentation. With that, it was the Messiah, whom he had now awaited so long. The angel added that after seeing the child, he would die. Oh, what a wonderful sight that was to me. The little cell was so bright and the old man radiant with joy. He went home full of gladness, announced to his wife the good tidings of the angel, and then returned to his prayer. I have seen that the pious priests of Israelites of those times did not sway to and fro, much as when at prayer as the Jews of our days. But I saw them scourging themselves, Anna, in her cell, was also wrapped in prayer, and she, too, had a vision. Early in the morning, while it was still quite dark, I saw the Holy Family accompanied by the two old people going into the city and to the temple. The ass was laden as if for journey, and they had taken with them the basket of offerings. They first entered a court that was surrounded by a wall and there the ass was tied under a shed. The Blessed Virgin and the Child were received by an old woman and conducted along a covered walk up to the temple. The old woman carried a light where it was still dark. Here in this passage came Simeon, full of expectation, to meet Mary. He spoke a few joyous words to her, took the child Jesus, pressed him to his heart, and then hurried to another side of the temple. Since the preceding evening, when he had received the announcement of the angel, he had been consumed by desire. He had taken his stand in the woman's passage to the temple, hardly able to await the coming of Mary and her child. Mary was now led by the woman to a porch in that part of the temple in which the ceremony of presentation was to take place. Anna and another woman, Naomi, Mary's former directress, received her. Simeon came out to the porch, conducted Mary with the child in her arms into the hall to the right of the woman's porch. It was in this porch that the treasure box stood by which Jesus was sitting when the widow cast her might. Old Anna, to whom Joseph had handed over the basket of fruit and doves, followed with Naomi. And Joseph retired to the standing place of the men. Anna remained there with Mary, led again by Simeon, passing on through the railing and up to the altar. 
Thereupon, one of the dishes, she deposited the fruit, and into the other laid some coins. The doves she placed upon the table in the basket. Simeon stood before the table near Mary, while the priest behind it took the child from the cradle, raised it high, and toward the different parts of the temple, praying all the while. Simeon next received the child from him, laid it in Mary's arms, and from a roll of parchment that lay near him on a desk, for her and the child. When the ceremonies were ended, Simeon went to where Mary was standing, took the child in his arms, and entranced with joy, spoke long and loud. When he ceased, Anna, also filled with the Spirit, spoke a long time. I saw that the people around heard them indeed, but it caused no interruption to the other ceremonies. Such praying aloud appeared not to be unusual. But all were deeply impressed and regarded Mary and the child with great reverence. Mary shone like a rose. Her public offerings were indeed the poorest. But Joseph, in private, gave to Simeon and Anna many little yellow triangular pieces, to be employed for the use of the temple, and chiefly for the maidens belonging to it, who were too poor to meet their own expenses. It was not every one that could have his child reared in the temple. Once I saw a boy in Anna's care. I think he was the son of a prince or a king, but I have forgotten his name. I did not witness the purification ceremonies of the other mothers, but I had an interior conviction that all the children offered on that day would receive special grace, and that some of the martyred innocents were among them. When the most holy child Jesus was laid upon the altar in the basket cradle. An indescribable light filled the temple. I saw that God was in that light, and I saw the heavens open up as far as the Most Holy Trinity. I saw the Holy Family return to Nazareth by a much more direct route than that by which they had gone to Bethlehem.